Well, such is the way of uh, modern management. Uh, congratulations, you've made it a year. It's a, it's a milestone moment. <laughs> Uh, yes, I suppose it is. Um, I'm not sure what the average tenure of a championship manager is. I think it's an average of something like 14 months. So, yeah. Um, listen, it's been it's been you know a very challenging year, very enjoyable year, and obviously, um, you know, one year into doing you know making progress, I think that that's where I see it. But it's been um, a very different year, obviously, with. The COVID uh, situation as well, obviously adding to the whole uh, experience. Just take us back twelve months then to, to when the offer came from Stoke. I know that you'd you'd had other offers in the past. You'd, you'd had the chance to to manage a, um, a Scotland and, and clubs. Mm -hmm. and what was it about Stoke that, that made it so attractive? Bearing in mind the other job offers that you'd knocked back. Um, I think first of all, you always look at the club and and. and uh, the structure of the club, the ownership model of the club is very, very important. Um, and it was very important to me to to know who would be working for us, essentially. And you know, many clubs, you know, particularly, you know, big championship clubs or Premier League clubs are, are owned by overseas owners. And, and you, you know, you don't have a, a particularly strong working relationship with, with that, uh, those particular people. And, you know, I think as a manager, you can feel a bit isolated in that that side of things. So that was a big factor. I had spoken to other clubs over the previous, you know, I'd been in the Northern Ireland job for eight years and there had been approaches. Um, but there was just something about the Stoke job that I, I felt um, was very attractive. And uh, having, obviously having met the, the relevant people and the owners, um, you know, it became more attractive. And, and, and that's, that's where I saw it. It was probably... Um, a good time as well because we'd, we'd, we'd done ever so well in qualification and we played so well against Holland but just missed out and um, we'd been narrowly beaten by Germany as well and I think at that time I was probably feeling a little bit that you know do everything you can possibly do at that level but you know just you're just a little bit short you know the players you have just you know to compete at the highest highest level of international football is very very difficult so um, you know, having been, at, you know, trying to do that for eight years and, and, and um, I think possibly the time of the opportunity was right for me as well. What wasn't so attractive was our league position, mm. uh, rock bottom and I think six points adrift of safety. So, so what changes were you able to implement almost immediately that had such a sort of significant impact and had us on, a, on an upward tra trajectory? I think it was, you know, obviously I came into the club on a Friday morning. It's a real whirlwind, to be honest, because I was obviously still committed to do the international games that were starting um, the following week. So um, I, had, I had games against Holland and Germany the following week to deal with as well. Um, and, and the first game, to be honest, I, I didn't intend to really... Um, get my hands dirty. I thought the team had played on, on Monday night against West Bromwich Albion, played in a you know three five two formation, hadn't looked particularly um, convincing in that shape and had a poor result. So I you know I thought well maybe I let you know the existing staff that were there that take the game. But well, once we got training got underway and started to sort of get involved a little bit put some of my thoughts across and it was actually Andy Cousins who I had brought with me and he was the only member of the staff that I'd brought with me at that point in time and then the coach up to Barnsley he just said listen pick the team you want and rather than he says you know leave it to others and we, we felt we would pick a 4-3-3 uh, which the team which the, the club hadn't played that season and uh, we, we hoped we would get the right response, which we did, obviously, and it was a good result. And uh, I think the most important thing when you come in in that situation is you win the game, because obviously I was disappearing with the international uh, situation. So it was important for me to try and win that game. And uh, you know, I, I think just taking charge of the game was very important. And um, it was uh, it, it was a good start. You know, it was a good good foothold to get off and running. And um, you know, that, that was the main thing, to just try and win games when you come in. It wasn't a case of trying to change too much because we had to just try and get to know the players, if I'm honest. You know, it was very, very difficult in the early days to get to know the players. Um, 
just because the training time was limited. Um, the games were coming thick and fast. And uh, you're trying, you're approaching January and you've got a squad, which is clearly, you know, given the amount of money that had been invested in it, it sh- shouldn't be where it is. And you have to try and uh, understand and assess why those, why the club is in that position. Um, and that, that was where I suppose, you know, I had to try and get my head around that as well. Once you'd been in a, a few months and had a good look at the club, was there anything that particularly surprised you about what you inherited? Um, yeah, I, I, I was, I suppose, a little bit, you know, taken aback, a little bit disappointed where some of the players who had come to the club and had not been there very long were clearly one away from the club. And so that, that was disappointing for me to see that, you know, maybe players who had signed for the club in the Premier League and as soon as the club lost its Premier League status, for example, felt that, you know, that they, they didn't want to be part of a club trying to get uh, promoted from the Championship. They certainly didn't want to be part of a club that um, was at the wrong end of the table in the Championship as well. So those things in particular were alarming for me and concerning for me because the players were on very good contracts and um, the club had invested heavily in them. And, uh, you know, the most important thing I, I learned in the opening weeks and, you know, was trying to get a group of players together that, you know, had a common cause, for want of a better word, that wanted, you know, saw the Stoke as a, as a positive thing, saw being at Stoke as a positive thing and wanted to drag the club away from the position they were in. And and that that was really, you know, game after game, week after week, you started to learn more and more about the players. And, and, and the challenge was, was obviously then try to get that group in, in, in a better shape and a better mindset than where it was, obviously, when I found it. I suppose that was drawing on your Northern Ireland experiences because, you know, you had a, a group of 20-odd lads who were desperate to play for Northern Ireland. Um, you needed to sort of engender that sort of mood at, at, at Stoke as well, didn't you? Yeah, you do. Well, I think you have to do it. You, you, you do. It didn't, it didn't happen overnight at Northern Ireland because international football, obviously, you, you don't have the time because it's sporadic, but... Uh, games and you only get the players really five five times a year and, and you never always get them you know 100 percent of them and those consistently but yeah there was things in the Northern Ireland job when I came in that had to be addressed there was the player commitment was one thing uh, certainly in terms of players you know, being available I said like you know we were never going to achieve anything unless you know we we were available as close to 100 percent of the time as possible um, and you know you just, it's, for one, you know, culture is a word that's talked a lot in, in sport at the minute. And, you know, for me, culture is about coming in, training hard, you know, doing your best to get in the team and, you know, being a decent professional when you're not in the team. And and that's the challenge that, you know, and I think we had to improve um, certainly the culture that was in, was in the club. And, you know, that, so, so there was many things I learned from Northern Ireland that, you know, I wouldn't say I brought them into Stoke because it's a different group of players and it's a different relationship. An international manager has a different relationship with the players than a club manager. Um, but certainly, I think, you know, obviously the experience I'd had in international uh, football had helped me, um, you know, understand what was necessary for the group of players. Ultimately, the relegation battle almost went down to the wire. Um we were you always confident that we would would stay up because you know we hit a few bumps along on the road, didn't we? Yeah, we did. It, it's a, I suppose it was. I was trying to understand the championship at that point as well. I, I did, you know, get quite frustrated. Why, you know, I felt we were. Why can we not get on a, you know, a five, six, seven, you know, unbeaten run games of games that. Um, we can pick up enough points and, and we were kind of, we'd win a game, we'd lose a game, um, we'd draw a game and we, we, we struggled to get that real consistency. But having been in the championship for the year, uh, I think that's the nature of the league. You know, I, as I say, looking back at, at the form of, of where we were, like our form was from, from when the 31 games were in charge. I think it was, it would have had a seventh in the table um, 
but yet we were still had to go to the second last game of the season before we had assurances that we'd stay up. And I think that's just the nature of the league. I think possibly coming in, I, I thought it would be easier to get points. If I'm honest, I thought we would we would uh, you know be able to change things quicker. We'd get more consistency in the squad players quicker, um, and 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 that wasn't the case. And I think that's the nature of the league a little bit as well, to be honest. So, you know, um, it, it was that's where you know I I think you have to continue to improve. We have to continue to look to, to improve as well. I think our consistency has been a lot better this season. Um, you know, we we, we, we had a um, difficult situation because I think we were strong before lockdown and we'd had a really good result. And I think at that time we were playing well and, and we possibly could have then maybe gone on that little run that would have seen us um, ease away from the bottom of the league before we actually did. But when you came back post-lockdown, it was like starting all over again. Um, and we didn't start well. You know, we lost two games at home to Middlesbrough and away to Wigan. And we had to react to that. But thankfully, in the next six, we only were beaten by Leeds. I think we had uh, was it four wins. and you know, I think we took 13 points in the next six games. That was enough. But Certainly, yeah, there was moments, you know, where particularly after the Wigan game where I had serious concerns about whether we, we, we would be strong enough to, to handle the situation and, and, and get ourselves out of the situation. But, you know, that's when you you have frank times with the players, you have frank meetings with the players, um, and uh, we got the right reaction when we needed it at that point in time.